Welcome to PSD to HTML5 and CSS3. This video is called Validating Your CSS3. In this video, we're going to be taking all of the CSS3 code that we have for our website and inputting it into a CSS3 validator. And that validator is going to let us know if we have any bugs, errors, or warnings or mistakes in our code so that we can fix them accordingly to ideally have uh, a valid CSS3 document, just as we did in the previous video with our HTML5. Uh, the thing with CSS3 is it's pretty forward thinking and there are a lot of uh, um, selectors that you can use in CSS3 that aren't necessarily valid. Um, and that's kind of um, a gray area with validating your CSS. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it. Um, it's it doesn't really have an effect at all with SEO search engine optimization um, HTML uh, validating it does have um, a small effect on the SEO but when it comes to CSS3 it really doesn't have much of an effect at all and if you have something that's really gonna break your site and it's an actual bug or an error that's good to fix but there's going to be a few things specifically in our CSS3 that I know are going to shoot some errors at us and then we'll look at them and I'll let you know uh, how necessary it is to fix those bugs or not and I'll explain why. So let's go to our browser, navigate yourself to um, jigsaw.w3.org uh, slash CSS validator and what we're going to do here is uh, go by direct input we're going to paste our CSS3 in uh, this text area like we did with the HTML. So go to your code editor, copy all of your CSS, and paste it in here. Now before you check and validate, there's something here called more options. And basically these are thresholds or settings that uh, you want to use while it validates your CSS. You can have it so that it um, validates it very specifically and it gives you all warnings uh, or to, to no warnings or most important normal report uh, and vendor ext extensions you can have them displays warnings or errors or de the default. So you might not really know much about this but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these around and feel free to follow along. So I'm changing it to CSS level three, uh, type CSS, medium, uh, we can leave it at all or we can choose screen because it is for the web. Warnings, let's say no warnings because they're kind of, um, uh, well, you know what, for the case of this, let's just leave it normal and I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. You're gonna, we're gonna get a whack of errors. So there we go, we got 15 errors in our CSS and 24 warnings. Um, so this is just, um, it seems like it's really bad uh, and there might be one or two things in here that we can fix. But from what I can see, if I were to look at these errors, there's some things here that I already see don't matter to me and I don't, I wouldn't consider it an actual error. So like I said, validating your CSS is not uh, absolutely fundamental in the success of your website or anything like that. It's just a nice coding practice and it's nice to have valid code. But when you're pushing the boundaries with CSS3 and HTML5, you're going to run into some things that uh, validators aren't necessarily going to like, specifically the w3.org validators, um, which are kind of by the book. So. I can see here the property text rendering doesn't exist for optimized legibility. You remember we used that in our CSS uh, to make the text look nice. We used it to uh, you know sharpen it and to render the text a little bit nicer. Uh, and that's a real CSS3 um, style, but it doesn't really, uh, W3 doesn't necessarily uh, recognize it, but it's, um, on uh, mozilla.org, they have uh, some explanations of how it works and the different selectors and styles you can use. Um, and it's saying that the uh, optimized legibility uh, is compatible with Safari and uh, Firefox. And that's good. That's exactly who, what we were targeting. And um, it's okay 
that, uh, where is it, that we have an error for this because it's not really an error. If you really didn't want to see any errors or say you had a client who wanted absolutely perfect CSS, we could change that no problem. All we have to do is take this line out, delete it. You're not going to get that nice, crisp, smooth text that we that we achieved with this line. Uh, but if having valid CSS is way more important than that uh, to you or a client, then take it out. And then that'll take out an error there and an error here. Uh, property zoom doesn't exist. That this one and this one is basically creating all the rest of these errors. I know it looks really bad, but what this is essentially is, uh, if I were to go to our styles here and search for zoom, I don't know if you remember this, but in a previous video, we did this to fix an IE7 inline block uh, bug, which was when we use the inline block positioning, uh, IE7 doesn't quite get it. And this is like a little bit of a fix that we can do to make it recognize uh, an inline block, uh, something like an inline block positioning. So if you take this out, sure, you might get more, uh, you probably would have more valid CSS according to this specific validator. But then all of a sudden you have some IE7 display issues, which uh, could potentially mess your site up quite a lot and you're going to have to go back to your CSS and your HTML and do some other workarounds and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So uh, I'll take this out. I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to take these lines out and do what this tells me to do. So I'm going to take all this out. I'm going to take out, there's more down here. Let's take this out and uh, then we also have, I believe, uh, the legibility. Let's take that out and let's take that one out and I think that's all so now if I copy this and I go back and I repaste what we did just now okay can't seem to select it here looks like I killed my browser okay here we go we're back paste and check now. Let's see what uh, what it thinks. There we go. We have perfect CSS. But now what happened is we lost the, uh, the IE7 fix. So the inline block, if we use inline block for buttons or certain elements, then we're going to have to get some display issues and it's going to be probably uh, worse than having a little CSS error, which isn't necessarily an error. Um, so uh, you kind of have to weigh the, you know, weigh the options, you know, what's, what's worse, having an error on your CSS, which actually isn't causing any issues, or actually having a big display issue because you took out that one line that is causing uh, a silly little CSS error. Same with the text rendering. Uh, you take that out and now your text doesn't look as smooth and it's that one detail that we really liked is gone just for um, a, you know, a validation uh, issue. And to me, um, validating isn't that important unless it's actually going to cause major issues for your website. And in these cases, they're, they're, to, they're actually helping the site. So uh, if you want, you can have this and you can show off your your CSS, val, valid CSS badges on your site. Totally fine. But for me, I like pushing the boundaries a bit and I'm putting all of this back in and I'm going to go against that valid CSS just a little bit. Uh, and that doesn't make me a bad developer or you a bad developer. It's just, uh, it's up to you on what you want to, what you want to do with your CSS. So put this back. I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to revalidate one more time here, but I'm going to change a few things down here in the options. So once I can get this working again, I'm going to change these options down here to maybe be a little bit more lenient and, uh, and then let's see what happens. Well, this website really doesn't like when I hit back. So hang in there. We'll be uh, we'll be back soon.
Okay, here we go. Paste. Uh, everything's in there like we had before. CSS level three, type CSS, screen, warnings. Let's say no warnings. I don't care about the warnings because they were actually, um, we, uh, we don't really need to worry about warnings. Uh, and vendor extensions, let's say uh, warnings. So let's see what this does. Let's see if it changed anything or if it minimized the effect of the errors or something. Okay, so the errors, they, uh, they look the same. They didn't actually change. It still really doesn't like optimized legibility, the zoom property or the display in line or anything like that. So um, if you coded it the same way that I coded it in this uh, course, and you have these same errors, I wouldn't worry about it. We're pushing the boundaries a little bit with CSS3, so you're gonna come into some, uh, you're gonna run into people who don't really like it, say, for example. So I, I, don't, I don't mind having these. Uh, I, I'm not um, really strict about my, my validation process. I just wanna make sure that I don't have any display errors or uh, everyone's experiencing a good um, uh, a user experience on my websites. And for me, Having these things like optimized legibility and having IE7 be able to display the same inline block elements as people using really awesome browsers like Chrome or Safari, uh, I, want, I want those people to have that experience. So taking these out um, and having a perfect valid CSS3 document, it's, uh, it's kind of a trade-off. So for me, not worth it. These 15 errors are totally fine uh, and I don't mind saying that. So if you got this far, and uh, you chose to go this route and to keep the display options uh, and never mind some of these errors, or if you chose to go the totally clean CSS and HTML, good on you, that's awesome. Congratulations for coming this far and coding what might have been your first website. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video, just an overview of what we've done. So I'll see you there.